Before I get into this video, I want to share something with you. I did start filming this video just days before all of the protests started for the Black Lives Matter movement. I do want to say I am in full support of everything about Black Lives Matter. Police brutality is at an all-time high and something needs to happen about it. I will link below some resources, some books, things like that for you if you do want to learn. While I was painting this room, I was listening to an amazing book and it really opened my eyes to a lot of things. It is called How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi. Without further ado, on to the video. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name's Casey. I'm new to YouTube and you're new to my channel, so go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell so you can get all my new videos. Over the next few weeks, I'll be giving you a new video every Thursday about my bedroom makeover. I'll be including how-tos on painting and hanging curtains, painting a headboard on your wall. I'm really excited for that project. A few decorative DIYs. I moved back in with my mom a couple months ago from Taiwan. I lived there for about two years uh, teaching English as a foreign language. It's a great experience. I'll also have videos on that experience and everything about Taiwan, a bunch of trips to do there, things like that. I was really only supposed to be home for about a month before moving back to Southeast Asia, to Vietnam specifically. I had a job there as a summer camp photographer, which I was super excited about. That got canceled though because there's a global pandemic right now. So I'm staying home and you should stay home too. Flatten the curve. It is being flattened. Still try to stay home as much as possible. Needless to say, I have been home and will be home for a lot longer than expected. Since I was only going to be here for a month, I had no plans to do anything to this room. But since I will be here for another four or five months now, I'm a little sick of it and I want to upgrade it and, and really make it into a grown-up room, you know? Uh, it's kind of in the immature teenage stage. I am unemployed at the moment, so I'm going to be doing this on as much of a budget as possible. I've spent about $50 so far on some painting supplies. Uh, hopefully I'm not going to be spending much more than a hundred, maybe $125 more on some of the other projects that I want to do. This will be a short series. This is episode one. Some of the other episodes will include some of the DIY projects that I want to do, like the photo wall and some of the wall decoration. I'm going to do a painted headboard on the wall. Another video will include some of the finishing touches, like the hanging curtains and hanging the mirror. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, here is the disorganized mess that my room is now. I'm going to clean everything out of this room and then take those shelves down and then get ready for the paint job. And this here is the really bad paint job that I did when I was a teenager. I did not use painter's tape and I learned my lesson. I will be using painter's tape this time. So, since my drill is not powerful enough to help me, uh, I'm going to do it the hard way, the long way, with a handheld screwdriver. Yay! So, I have one, two, three stubborn screws that I'm going to try and finish getting out with this ratcheting screwdriver. So wish me luck. Hopefully I don't break anything. I'm already dead tired so it's going to be even harder than it should be. Another tip was to use this like you use on a nail but to use it on the screw. I don't know if I really have the kind of area. Wait, let me try and use this. Well, that didn't work. Oh! It broke. 
Oops. Now we're going to move on to filling the holes. This is the lightweight spackling that I got. I also picked up a spackling knife or a putty knife for about a dollar at the local Home Depot. First thing you want to do is mix it up a little bit. I should have gotten a smaller spackling knife and then just take a little bit on the corner of your knife. What you want to do with the spackling on your knife is put it over the hole and then just wipe away the extra. We're going to do that one more time. Just put it over the hole and wipe away the extra. It's as simple as that. You want to try and make sure you get as much in the hole as possible. You want to come at it from different angles just to make sure all of the sides of the hole are filled. Once you really get the hang of it, you can go pretty fast. I also have a bunch of pushpin holes from where I hung up some paintings and photographs and stuff, so I'm going to fill those too. Two hours later. The next thing you want to do is get a fine grit sandpaper and sand down all of the spots. You can skip this step if your walls are rough. I wanted to do this just because my walls are pretty smooth. Now if all of my walls were that beige color, I would not have needed to prime at all. I want to make sure the purple color doesn't show through when I'm finished painting. The first thing in priming is to go along the edges and corners and make sure you get around any electrical outlets. Take off those electrical outlets first and then you don't have to worry about cutting in around those. I'm not using painter's tape for the priming portion because the baseboards and ceilings are white and they already have some purple paint on them and I want to cover up that purple paint as much as possible. When you get to the rolling portion, the first tip I want to give you is to pour the paint over the label so as not to cover up any of the ingredients or instructions on the back of the label. You also want to paint in a V or W shape. Sometimes when you paint in straight lines you can see that when the paint dries. Unfortunately I did have some technical difficulties and my camera ended up only recording 26 seconds of my first coat of paint. Speaking of coat, always do at least two coats of paint. You will always miss a spot on the first coat. Another tip is to paint barefoot. It sounds weird, I know, but imagine you're painting your room and you drip some paint on one of your drop cloths. If you have bare feet, you'd know immediately if you stepped in it and you won't risk tracking it everywhere. Okay, we're back after a couple days. So the room is officially dry. As you can see, I've moved the bed into its position already. I already do have an issue as the air vent blows directly on me, so I'm going to have to do something to fix that. First step now is to take the tape off of the ceiling and the baseboards. I will also put my dresser over in this corner, I'm gonna put my chair over in this corner, change out the sheets, do a few little things like that, and then we'll see where we are. Alright, I'm going to show you the before shots again so you get the full impact of what cleaning and painting a room can do. And now on to the after shots. I absolutely love how this color looks in this room. I'm not entirely in love with my layout yet so I might work on that a little bit. Alright, we're finished! My room's painted! It's one of my favorite colors too. I may not be keeping my bed here, I may be moving it over to this wall. What to expect in the next episode is painting the headboard on the wall and putting the frame around my closet. I really think those two projects are going to make a huge difference in this room. Be sure to subscribe below and hit the little notification bell so you can get the alert for that video. It will be coming to you next Thursday. Thanks everyone, have a great day and I can't wait to see you next week. Stop it! More than a hundred, a hundred and twenty-five dollars. Stop it! Go away!
Go. If you're going to fight, go. Go.